Welcome to Flatty Teacher. So far, we have seen various constructors of grid view. In this session, I'm going to explain most widely used grid view widget constructor called grid view dot builder. So without wasting time, let's get started. Almost all applications deal with dynamic data that come from device locally or remote data like Firebase or other APIs. When such a data needs to be shown on UI as a grid, the gridview.builder is the best option to use. The gridview.builder is the name constructor from gridview class which is specially made to display dynamic data as two-dimensional scrollable array of widget that are created on demand. You will understand why I'm saying on demand. This constructor is appropriate for grid view with large or infinite number of children. This is because the builder is called only for those children that are visible on the screen. In this example, to mimic the dynamic data, I'm going to use list of images stored locally in the assets of application. Now here are three most important properties of gridv.builder. Item count decides total number of tiles inside the grid. It means how many widgets or how many tiles you want inside each row of your grid view. Let me set its value to say image list .lin so that I can consume all the images present inside my image list. Item builder is a required property which is responsible for building each tile and it will be called only for those children or tiles that are actually visible. It takes a function with build context and index as parameter. From here, we should return a widget that represents our tile. Let's return image.asset widget from here, taken from the image list. And to maintain your uniform, set the feed property of image to boxfeed.cover. Grid delegate is again a required property which needs sliver grid delegate instance. Sliver grid delegate is an abstract class which has two concrete subclasses sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count and sliver grid delegate with max cross axis extent. Let's see sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count. We use this when we need a grid to have fixed number of tiles like 2, 3 or 4 in the cross axis. Let me get clear about the axis of grid view. When grid view scrolls vertically then that direction is the main axis and the horizontal direction here is the cross axis for your grid view. On the other hand when we have grid view that scrolls in the horizontal direction then that direction is the main axis and of course the vertical direction here represents the cross axis. There is a property called cross axis count that defines number of tiles in your cross axis for the grid view. Let's set its value to 2 and let me save here. You can see we have got 2 tiles in cross axis. Why I am saying cross axis? Because I am scrolling in a vertical direction. That's why my horizontal direction here is the cross axis. And let's change its value to say 3. Now you will observe here we have total 3 tiles in each uh, row. Let's set it to 4 and you can observe the change accordingly. Now let me send it uh, value to 2 so that uh, I can explain for the properties. We can also apply uh, some uh, spacing among the uh, tiles here. You can observe here there is no spacing among the axis. Now in order to apply spacing in the main axis, we can use option say main axis spacing. For example, let's set its value to 16 pixel. You will observe here there is a spacing of 16 pixel in a main axis. In the same way, we can apply spacing for a cross axis. For example, let's set its value to 4 and you can see here we have got a 4 pixel spacing here. If you can't see it properly, let me set it to it so that you can see it properly now. It's quite nice. If you observe this grid view carefully, you will notice that each tile has the same width and same height. If you want a tile should have a different height, then there are two options. The first option is child aspect ratio. Basically, it is the ratio of cross axis to main axis extent of each child. Its value must be between 0 0.0 to 1.0. For example, when the value is 1, it means each tile will have exactly same width and same height. And if I change the value to say 0.5, it means height of the tile is double than its width. And if I set its value to say 2.5, it means height of tile is 4 times than its width. Now many times instead of having the height of tile in the form of ratios with width, we want a particular uh, fixed pixel height for a tile. And that is also possible. First of all, let me comment this child aspect ratio and let's save here. Now, for this purpose, we can make the use of a property called main axis extent. Uh, and here it requires the exact pixel. For example, let's say if I use 100, it means each tile will have the height of 100 pixels. And if I set its value to say 200, you can observe the change. Each tile has got the height of 200 pixels. Let's set it value to say 300. And now you can observe the change properly. 
we can also pass value for this grid delegate using the instance called sliver grid delegate with max cross axis extent which is useful when number of tiles in a cross axis needs to have certain maximum extent that is maximum specific size there's a property called max cross axis extent which requires the maximum pixels here let's say i'm passing value 300 so here 300 means i want a tile to have maximum 300 pixels width here why i'm saying width because uh, by default my grid view has got a scroll direction of vertical that's why uh, for cross axis it's definitely a width so it's important to note that here each tile won't have exact 300 pixel instead Flutter will try to adjust the tile so that there should be equal number of width for each and every tile in each row and but it will make sure that each tile means every tile should not have uh, the more than 300 pixels width here let's set its value to say 200 and you can see the change here we can also apply spacing here using the main axis spacing and the cross axis spacing and we can also control the height of grid using the child aspect ratio and the main axis extent let me comment it and let's pass the main axis spacing 16 pixel and let me pass the same spacing for the cross axis let's save here and you can observe here there is no padding for the grid view so we can apply the padding there is an option inside this grid view to apply the padding so for this padding let's pass value to say agencies dot all and let's use a 16 pixel padding across my entire grid view you can observe here this grid view scrolls by default in a vertical direction so if you want to change the scroll direction there is option called scroll direction let's say it's its value to say axis dot horizontal because vertical is by default one let's say it, uh, set it to horizontal let's save and you can observe now uh, i need to scroll this grid view in the horizontal direction let me set it to vertical and let's save you can see now it's scrolling in a vertical direction if you want to reverse the sequence of tiles then there is a property called reverse and we have to pass its value to true and definitely when i save here you can observe now there is a change in the uh, sequence of tile here Fidgets property enables us to control the scroll effect after reaching at the end of the grid. By default, the value for this physics is clamping scroll physics. So let's use here clamping scroll physics. Uh, let me save here and you can observe here. When I'm reaching at the end of the list and when I try to scroll here, you can see there is uh, some effect happening. So that effect is happening due to this clamping scroll physics. So instead of this clamping scroll physics, let me change say another value and that is say bouncing scroll physics. Let's save and you can observe now when I drag means when I try to scroll the list, you will observe that there is a bouncing like effect. Using controller, we can control the scrolling of grid view programmatically and respond to various user scroll operations. There is a property called cat extend using which we can control the performance of your grid view. Basically, for the grid view, viewport has got area before and after the visible area in order to catch the children which are about to be shown when user scrolls up or down in the grid view. For example, when I set value of this grid view to say 500, it means Flutter will catch the tiles that can fit in the pixels of 500 at the top side and for the bottom side as well. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next video. If you really found this video helpful and knowledgeable, then don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell notification button to get my latest videos.